Hi and welcome to Studio SN. My name is Sarah Newman and today I want to show you a watermark resist technique that I learned from Claudine Helmuth. So thank you Claudine for sharing this technique with me. Let's take a look. I really like this technique because not only is it a great way to get a multicolored and uh, dimensional textured background, but it's also a really great way to use your stencils, print your stencils to another great use. So you can see this area here in my background. This is the watermark resist. So that yellow and red Harlequin diamond area has been created with a stencil and a watermark resist and some paint. So let me show you how easy this is to do. The first thing I'm going to start with is a piece of paper that has been painted. And this is a cardstock um, that I painted with a couple of coats of Claudine Helmuth's um, yellow pastel. I really like this shade of yellow. So you need to start with a non-porous surface, which is why I painted this paper. And then the next thing you need is a stencil. And I'm using a clear plastic stencil. This is from the Crafters Workshop, and this is their Harlequin um, design. And what I like about it is that the Harlequin is not perfect. So you can see some kind of scuffy, irregular areas here. It's not a completely perfect uh, diamond pattern. So it has a little bit of added interest. So I'm gonna use one of these and just simply place it down onto my paper. The next thing I need is a watermark resist re-inker. And it's really important that you have the re-inker rather than the pad because the re-inker is going to make it a lot easier to um, apply the, the um, re-inker, the watermark, through the stencil. So you need one of these and then also something to apply it with. And I'm working with a little piece of cut and dry foam. So I'm just going to scoot this out of the way because my re-inker uh, needs a, a bit of a firm pressure so uh, to get all of the ink out because you're going to put some of this onto your, um, your cut and dry or whatever um, foam applicator you're using. And it really, this is, is kind of thick. So you need to give it a bit of a squeeze and then sort of spread it out onto your um, onto your piece of cut and dry or, or whatever it is that you're using. You can use blending foam as well. So you can see that yellowy on there, that is the reinker. It takes two hands to get it out because it is so thick. So let me just put some of this on here. I think that should be enough. And then bring this back over. I need to hold down my stencil. So I'm gonna put my fingers where some of those irregular places are and then simply tap this down. Now the, uh, the watermark resist ink is pretty sticky. I think you can probably hear that as I'm lifting up. Um, so do make sure that you're holding on tight to your water or onto your stencil so that it doesn't go sliding all over the place. And kind of move your fingers over as you go and make sure that it's on there. The tricky part of course is that it's clear so it's a little bit hard to see. But once I've got this all the way around here, um, I can lift off that stencil and make sure that I've got all of those diamonds. And I think I've pretty much got them some areas over here that I missed. It's very, very sticky stuff, so it will get on your fingers too. All right, so I think I've got all of it. I'm gonna lift this off. Now, while this is still wet, I need to apply my second layer of paint. So I'm going to work with the um, Claudine Helmuth, the studio, this is Dash of Red. I want something that's going to contrast. So the red and the yellow are gonna be a good combination. And I'm spraying in some water into a little uh, yogurt lid container palette and then take my paintbrush and get in here and get some of that red paint. I want a very, very watery wash. Uh, very, very watery. So add some more water in here and blend this out. And then using my paintbrush, I'm going to put my second layer over here. So the important thing to remember with this is that you need to use a very light touch uh, when you're brushing on the paint. Don't squash down with your paintbrush. Really needs to be a very, very light touch so that it doesn't smear um, the watermark resist. So you can start to see already how that's coming out. And then I usually like to go kind of both directions. 
and make sure that I get as much on here as I want and get some really nice complete coverage if I want to um, I can also then come back and spray a little bit more you do want a very very wet um, wash on here and then the next thing you need to do is let this dry and you can either let it air dry or you can hit it with a heat gun which is what I'm going to do now this is dry, I'm going to take a um, dry tissue and just blot off, rub off any of the excess uh, watermark, get rid of any of that sticky residue that's on here. And then I've got a background that is ready to be used. So let me bring back in my original card and you can see that I just simply trimmed off the excess pieces here and then matted this onto a black cardstock before putting it onto my card, um, my card front. But I wanted to also show you this center focal stamped image on here. So let me move aside my background, move aside my card, and bring in a piece of yellow cardstock. And I'm going to stamp the focal on here. And the stamp that I'm using is from another Claudine product. Uh, this is the Bloom Foam Stamp Collection. And this is the flower stamp that I'm using. So it's a foam stamp already on a plastic block, uh, really lightweight acrylic. And I'm going to put on more of the dash of red paint. And I'm going to use a very technical tool, my finger. And I like applying the paint this way on these foam stamps because it just gives me a lot more control than trying to get it on with a brush. Because there are separations between the various areas on the stamp. So it's really easy if you apply it with a brush to get it kind of globby and um, blobby <laughs> in the in, in the innies. That's a really technical term, by the way. Globby and blobby in the innies. <laughs> I think you know what I mean. So I'm just swiping this on here. I don't want it, you know, really thick, but enough so that I'm going to get a good impression and make sure I don't have any globby blobbies. Then I just turn this over and press onto my yellow cardstock. It's not going to be a perfect impression. As you can see, it's an outline of the stamp. So it's going to give me a really cool um, stenciled design, which goes really nicely with the stencil that I've got on my background paper, which is, of course, that Harlequin design. Now, I also wanted to add the inside of my flower. So that's another stamp. It's this little dot part. And I'm going to take um, some archival, jet black archival ink and ink this up and then simply press it into the center. So that's how easy it is to make the focal part of my um, card. So let me bring back in my card, excuse my red painty fingers. And just wanted to point out a couple of additional things on this card. I used black as my accent piece because that goes really nicely with the contrast between the yellow and the red. And really, I think the yellow and red is such a cheerful and vibrant color combination. To have the black really sets things apart and kind of puts the focus onto the stamped flower area. So I just simply wrapped a piece of uh, black grain ribbon around here around the matted area, put this down into the center, and then matted it uh, or put it all onto the front of my red card. So really simple, very easy card design. You could do a ton of those backgrounds using all of your different stencils as well. So this is how to do a watermark resist using a stencil. I hope you enjoyed the technique today. For more inspiration and ideas, please do stop by my website at sarahnewman.com. Thanks so much for joining me today, and I will catch you next time. You can also connect with Claudine Helmuth on her website, which is collageartist.com. So thanks again, Claudine, for sharing your technique with me, and thank you to all of you for watching.